Not long after, the Jews experienced the divine presence coming down on the top of the mountain called Sinai, God giving us the Torah. And we have a handful of Jews, actually a couple of thousand at the time, according to the Midrashic literature, and we went and we worshipped the golden calf, perhaps the most egregious, the most grave error on the part of the Jewish people in our history. And of course the commentators are bothered, how is it possible that these Jews, they just attain an incredible spiritual level, and so short afterwards, so soon afterwards, there they go and they worship the golden calf. How is that possible? And the common theme that emerges from the voice of the commentators is the idea that the Jews felt, yes, we tasted an experience of God, we witnessed this God-like encounter, but you know what? We need a way to relate to God. We need a medium. We need an intermediary. And in theory, it wasn't such a bad idea. The problem was, the commentators point out, because God didn't issue such a command. Even idolatry. You know there's no word in the Hebrew tongue, in the holy tongue, Lush and Akodesh, there is no word no one word for idolatry. It's called Avodah Zarah. You know what it is? It's Avodah, which translates into service, dedicated and loyal service of God. But it just happens to be Zarah. It happens to be foreign. And you know why it's foreign service? Because God didn't issue such a command. We even have, if I could take you to Leviticus, the commencement of chapter 9, we have the two holy sons of Aaron, the high priest. And they, on their incredible spiritual level, they also sinned. And the Torah doesn't even tell us what the precise nature of the sin was. That's left up to the oral tradition and the Midrashic literature. It tells us one thing and one thing only. That they sacrificed a foreign sacrifice, an Ish Zara. It was a carbon, it was a sacrifice. It was a great thing, noble intentions. The greatest of motives, wherein lay the error, God did not issue a command. And if God didn't tell you to do such an act, that makes it an ish zara, makes it a foreign fire, a foreign sacrifice. And they got punished and they died on the spot. Going back to the worship of the golden calf, noble motives, the greatest of intentions. God, we just want to get close to you. But we need an intermediary to help us out. We can't relate to you, we can't see you, we can't fully experience your omniscience, your unbelievable qualities and characteristics. So you know what? Let's set up an intermediary and through this wondrous majestic intermediary we'll get even closer to you it's great idea you know what but if god didn't command it it's too bad it becomes an avoda but it's an avoda zara it becomes foreign service of god our job is to listen to what god tells us to follow his instructions sometimes it makes sense sometimes it doesn't make sense you can have the greatest of intentions you can rationalize from here to tomorrow and you can come up with the greatest of excuses but you know what if it doesn't fall within the parameters of what's allowed and what's not allowed, then it could be on the surface the greatest ways of worshiping and serving our Creator. But if God didn't tell us to take such action, then it becomes a vodazara, which is our terminology by which we brand, by which we label every type of idolatrous service. Let's learn those all important lessons from the sin of the golden calf. Let's serve God within the parameters of what's allowed and what's not allowed in Jewish law. Let's try and rectify that grave error. And let's try and Receive the Torah from God every day of our lives with those intentions and those thoughts in mind.